Hello everyone. Today we will be talking on biochemical test and that too for isolation and identification of Staphylococcus aureus. And we will also discuss about other virulent species of Staphylococcus genus and focus on the biochemical test only. Coming to um, the next slide, uh, that is if an organism is giving gram-positive reaction. Uh, that means the staining shows that it is gram positive. So we will look into the um, details of the microscope. And I have talked about the microscopic morphology in my previous lecture where you will, uh, you can go and see the details about how Staphylococcus looks in different kind of microscope. But since here we will be focusing on biochemical test. So see that we want to, know perfectly well that this is Staphylococcus and which species of Staphylococcus. So these biochemical tests we are performing to go into the detailed uh, chemistry uh, by performing biochemical tests of particular species. So here um, when we see uh, organism, uh, we see an organism giving gram positive uh, staining then we go and look into the details of the shape in the light microscope and we find that it is having a grape-like cluster we put it under staphylococcus and if it is in chains we put it under streptococcus then still sometimes what happens when we are preparing the smears uh, the structures may get disturbed and we may see um, sometime that a uh, grape-like cluster is there and then some chains are visible and we may be confused whether it's Staphylococcus or Streptococcus since both are gram-positive organisms. So gram-positive organisms which are in clusters or in chain and we are having some type of confusion by seeing the different fields we go for uh, culture characteristics also and the cu culture characteristics I have discussed in detail in my previous video on Staphylococcus genus. That was only on Staphylococcus genus. The Streptococcus we will be discussing sometime later. So now after seeing an organism that it is gram positive, we can perform certain biochemical tests. So if we perform a catalase test first, what is a catalase test and how you dif differentiate between a negative and a positive test that we will be discussing in the next slides but here uh, let me tell you one thing that if you want to differentiate between genus staphylococcus and genus streptococcus catalase te test is a good test where staphylococcus always gives a positive catalase test I will let you know what is a positive catalase test, but remember that Staphylococcus always gives positive catalase test, while Streptococcus genus gives negative catalase test. So if you want to differentiate very fast, is it a, a Streptococcus genus or a Staphylococcus, you can go for a catalase test. Then coming to oxidase test, in case of oxidase also, Staphylococcus gives a negative oxidase test while Streptococcus gives a positive oxidase test. So these two tests are very good tests to differentiate between two genus Staphylococcus and Streptococcus. While Staphylococcus gives catalase positive, Streptococcus gives catalase negative. Oxidase is just reverse, Staphylococcus is negative and Streptococcus is positive. So this is an important slide to the and it mentions two tests to differentiate between Staphylococcus and Streptococcus genus. Now, you may be uh, wanting to know what is a catalase test. So catalase test is just differentiating the organisms which are producing catalase enzyme. And whether they are producing catalase enzyme or not, this can be detected by putting small inoculum in hydrogen peroxide. You can perform this test on a slide. You can perform this test in a tube. What you have to do, you just have to put a small inoculum, that is a small colonies of Staphylococcus or the sample of specimen which you have collected. You just have to put that specimen inside a slide which is having hydrogen peroxide in it, a drop of hydrogen peroxide in it, or you can put it in a tube 
where hydrogen peroxide is there and you add the inoculum or the specimen. What you will see, if you see bubbles here, that means this catalase enzyme have the capacity to, br br uh, to break this hydrogen peroxide into hydro uh, water and oxygen, that is H2O and oxygen. So catalase breaks hydrogen peroxide into water and oxygen and this oxygen is evolved in form of bubbles. So it's a very quick test and it is for positive for Staphylococcus genus and it is negative for Streptococcus. Important test. Another one is oxidase. Oxidase is with the organisms containing cytochrome C. That means those organisms which are which is having or which are having organisms that are having cytochrome C as a part of the respiratory chain. That means this uh, molecule is present in their respiratory chain. Then they what they do, they turn tetramethyl P phenylene diamine, phenylene diamine dihydrochloride as a big reagent. You can remember it as oxidase testing reagent. If the name is not, um, you, it's a big name. So try to mug up the name or remember that it is oxidase test reagent. And when this is put on a paper and you put an inoculum on this, so if an organism is containing cytochrome C, then what will happen? This reagent will turn purple in color. Otherwise, it is of no color. So this is the color. If it is turning purple, if slightly pinkish is there, if it is turning purple, then this means that organism is positive. So only organisms which are containing cytochrome C as a molecule in their respiratory chain will be able to turn this oxidase reagent, that means this tetramethyl p phenylidine diamine into the blue or purple color. So who is positive? Only genus streptococci is positive, while Staphylococci is negative in this case. There are certain tests when you have separated out Staphylococcus from uh, performing catalase and oxidase tests and now you know your organism is catalase positive and oxidase negative. So you will come to know that it belongs to the genus Staphylococcus. Now you want to know whether it belongs to any of these three species. If it belongs to any of these three species, then you can perform these many biochemical tests to differentiate between these species. So these is the uh, here is the list. You can go through that list. I will talk about each and these tests individually, and you can know how to recognize this, uh, how to perform this test. Of course, I'm not going into the detailed procedure and principle but i'm only uh, here i'm putting how to distinguish between staphylococcus and streptococcus as a genus and then differentiate different staphylococcus species if your organism is uh, giving the tests which are positive for staphylococcus genus so these are these many tests are there and to remember this properly i put it like all positive is Staphylococcus aureus, then up to one, two, three, four, five Staphylococcus epidermidis, and some positive, some negative mix in case of saprophytica. So I'm just considering three species, how to separate out these three species by performing certain, certain biochemical tests. Aureus, um, all pathogenicity, I, I will be discussing in detail. Epidermidis, um, aureus causes lot many infections, uh, which we will talk in detail. Epidermidis is again a common cell and it's an opportunistic bacteria. As the name suggests, it's present on the epidermis and nears also. It is mostly responsible for causing nosocomial, that is high uh, hospital associated sepsis. So it's common for that. It makes a biofilm on the catheters and um, the, uh, the instruments which are um, prosthetics which are introduced inside the body. And saprophyticus is uh, usually associated with urinary tract infections in the um, young females who are in sexually active. 
So if you want to separate out uh, an organism and find it out that uh, whether it is, it is saprophyticus, uh, Staphylococcus saprophyticus, or if uh, symptoms are confusing and you want to differentiate between any three of them, you have to go for all these biochemical tests, uh, which uh, are uh, I'm I will be taking these tests one by one. Here in one uh, in do these two slides, I have given mentioned all the uh, tests which are negative and positive in uh, the uh, different species. So let's discuss the a small. Um, Thing behind uh, the positive or negative character in a, in any species of Staphylococcus, that is like when we talk about coagulase test. Again, you just have to remember that these is because of the enzyme coagulase, which is present in certain organisms, and this coagulase can convert soluble fibrogen into um, in plasma to insoluble fibrin. And when soluble fibrinogen is converted into fibrin, a clot-like structure is formed. So this can only be seen in the organisms which, ha which are having coagulase enzyme. Usually, uh, this coagulase enzyme is present in all the pathogenic uh, species of Staphylococcus genera, all the pathogenic species. Exceptions are always there in biology. So remember, only two exceptions are Staphylococcus epidermidis and Staphylococcus saprophyticus, which are the organisms which are pathogens. Still, they are coagulase negative. Otherwise, all the pathogenic organisms in Staphylococcus genera are coagulase positive. So one way to separate out the species of Staphylococcus genera which are coagulase positive will be pathogenic while those which are coagulase negative are non-pathogenic except two that is epidermidis and saprophyticus. They are coagulose, coagulase negative. This enzyme is absent in these two species. Still, they are viral. Next is novobiosin sensitivity test. What happens in this? You dip a disc in novobiosin uh, solution and then you uh, put this disc on a plate containing colonies of Staphylococcus species and you want to see which species is there. So if this novobiosin dipped disc is kept on the plate containing Staphylococcus aureus or Staphylococcus epidermidis. If this is epider, there is a spelling mistake, please. It is epidermidis, D-E-R. So if Staphylococcus aureus or Staphylococcus epidermidis is present in this colonies, then novobiosin sensitivity will be seen. Sensitivity means you will be seeing a clear zone. That means the colony's growth will be inhibited. So if it is sensitive, then this clear zone can be seen. So novobiosin sensitive organisms are Staphylococcus aureus and Staphylococcus epidermidis. The spelling is wrong. Is there? It's epidermidis. Remember. So these are sensitive while saprophyticus is resistant as you can see here. You have kept the novobiosin disc, um, a disc which is dipped in novobiosin solution and the colonies are not um, killed or the growth is not inhibited. So this is stiff, um, novobiosin resistant is Staphylococcus saprophyticus. These are the ways to separate out between the different genera of um, um, Staphylococcus genera and species, which species is there. Because these days, this is very important as organisms are developing, especially Staphylococcus aureus is developing um, resistance against most of the antibiotics. That we will talk later. Resistance is an important issue. We will talk in later videos. Here, one more way to separate out is Chapman agar or Manitol salt agar. I have in my... Um, previous lecture when I was discussing about culture, cultural characteristics of Staphylococcus, there I have talked that Staphylococcus is one of the bacteria which can survive high sodium chloride concentration. So here also, this many, in case where mannitol we have added as an indicator because this agar is a selective and, and differential media. Uh, 
it's indicated and differential media and selective too because it inhibits the growth of many bacteria because of the high salt concentration so mannitol is added with high salt concentration and what happens an indicator phenol red is also added so what happens when a organism when an organism an organism is able to grow in high salt solution and can ferment mannitol so that will what will it do it will convert this phenol red which is already uh, added in the solution and you can see the plate it is red in color normal colonies which cannot grow in mannitol salt agar will remain red in color while which can survive in high salt concentration and can ferment mannitol that can only grow saprophyticus and aureus are the two species which can grow in this and hence they are yellow in color so yellow color indicates positive test and those which cannot grow in this agar will be red in color and this red color indicates negative epidermitis is negative coming to next is a urease test and it is again for the organisms which are containing urease enzyme which hydrolyzes urea so urease will hydrolyze urea to produce ammonia and carbonic acid so what you have to do you have to add urea and inoculate an organism which can hydrolyze urea because of the presence of urease this is this is all the principle whatever biochemical test we are performing we are usually performing on the basis of presence of certain enzymes so here we have to find out whether urease is present in this organism or not. So we um, inoculate the bacteria in a Christensen urea agar slant and what will happen? All the positive ones will give a red color. This is the normal color of the agar and all and this uh, urease test this just remember urease test is positive in case of all three species that we are studying aureus epidermitis and saprophyticum it is positive in all three species coming to nitrate reductase test again uh, the enzyme nitrate reductase organisms which are having this enzyme will reduce nitrate to nitrite or to nitrogen gases also so what we have to do again we have to put uh, the nitrate in the test tube in the agar there is some nitrates i'm not going into the procedure i'm not talking about how this test is done we can talk on this some other day here i'm just telling you in which species of genera staphylococcus usually these particular enzymes are present so in case of staphylococcus aureus this um, um, nitrate reductase is present that is why it is able to reduce nitrate to nitrite and in the positive uh, case you will see the color in the negative case there will be no color it will be the common color of the broth usually nutrient broth looks of the same color only thing is in the broth nitrate is added a base nitrate is also added so that if our organism is having nitrate reductase it's going to ferment it so Two other species that we are dealing, that is epidermitis and saprophyticals, are not having nitrate reductase enzyme. So we can separate out. Another one test is gelatinase test. And gel gelatinase test is again same. Uh, organism producing gelatinase convert gelatin into soluble carbohydrates. So in this case, what we will see, gelatin is added in this test tube and a slant is made. And when gelatin is there, this is solidified because there is no gelatinase enzyme which will act on this and liquefy it. While if an organism is having gelatinase enzyme, it will act on this uh, a gelatin and will hydrolyze it or liquefy it and you will see a liquid so in the other test tube you can here see a liquid why the previously the without inoculation of the specimen the test tube was like this this was and after inoculation it has turned into a liquid so this is gelatin is positive and this is gelatin is negative this can liquefy so staphylococcus aureus have um gelatinase enzyme so it can liquefy gelatin while other two species that we are eating epidermidis and saprophyticals are not having gelatinase enzyme coming to methyl red test organisms have ability to utilize glucose and produce acid so those organisms which can utilize glucose 
So in this media, what happens? We are just adding glucose. In the in basic media, we are adding glucose and some indicator and seeing if it is Staphylococcus aureus, it will get, give a red color. And if it's not uh, um, Staphylococcus aureus and other species of, we are confused with other species like Epidermidis and Saprophyticus, they will not give any color. So again, Staphylococcus aureus is methyl red positive. That means it can ferment glucose and produce acid. And coming to Borges Proskurt test is an, again uh, more fermentation after uh, if it's producing more acids number of acids are more that can uh, that can uh, uh, act on Borges uh, Proskurt reagent and when it will act on Borges Proskurt reagent it will give crimson to ruby pink color so Borges Proskurt negative will be of this color Positive will be of crimson or pink colonies will be pink color can be seen. And this Borges Proskar is positive in Staphylococcus aureus and epidermidis. While epidermidis methyl red negative. So it was not able to ferment glucose, but it can ferment Borges Proskar reagent. I'm not going into the detail of Borges Proskar reagent because there are two range reagents in, and a whole procedure is there. So they, someday we will be uh, just reading the procedure of these tests. Here we want to just differentiate between which is Borges Proskar positive and negative. And I'm giving a, sim a small background of the test. But here what we are interested in is which organism is positive and which organism is negative. Coming to phosphate test, this is performed um, on the agar containing both methyl green and phenaphthalene. And again, we are going to see whether organism is producing phosphatase enzyme or not. So those which are having phosphatase enzyme will produce deep uh, uh, green stained colonies they will be deep green in color so that will be reducing uh, phosphate is in the media with two um, indicators and phosphatase if organism is producing uh, if organism is producing phosphatase then it will act on phosphate and produce a color so which organisms is, uh, which species of staphylococcus are positive staphylococcus aureus and staphylococcus epidermidis while Negative one is Staphylococcus saprophyticus. Coming to next biochemical test, that is indole test. And this is the last test, which series battery of test I have mentioned. And indole test is for the organisms which are containing tryptophanase, enzyme tryptophanase. And this tryptophanase decompose the amino acid. As, you, as the name indicates, this is tryptophanase. Decompose the amino acid tryptophan to indole in presence of Povex reagent. And in this case, solution turns yellow to cherry red. So here you can see this is, was a yellow solution in added it has turned into cherry red. So for tryptophanase to act on um, amino acid tryptophan, media should contain some tryptophan, then only tryptophanase containing organisms will produce tryptophanase and that will turn the cherry red solution to um, that will turn, turn the yellow to cherry red. And uh, this is negative. In indole test is negative in case of all the three species that we were considering. So in this lecture, I gave you a battery of tests uh, which can be done when we are, uh, we want to differentiate between the bacteria and going up to the species level. So this will start from the differentiation of bacteria into the genera. If it is gram positive, then you have to differentiate that this is uh, gram positive bacteria, but whether it's staphylo or strapto, because pneumococcus also is in the streptococcus genera. So once we have differentiated between the two genera, and then we want to differentiate between different three different species. I've concentrated on three different species. So you have to apply these tests. And I have also given you a table where you can uh, see your results and compare you, your results with the table. These tests are very important nowadays to separate out and come to the species level specificity and then uh, decide what antibiotics has to be given to a patient. Thank you very much for your patient listening. Thank you.